Okay, so guys, it's been a long day. How is everybody doing? Let's start from pleasantries, okay? We can't just start with um we can't just start with talking about sewing stuff, okay? Um it's been hi beauty, beauty empire. Hi, thanks for joining. Um so I just got back from the market not long ago, and guys, oh, 10 people have joined. Say hi when you join, please. Just say hi so I can, you know, call your name and acknowledge your presence. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I just got back from the market not long ago, and guys, I don't know why there's no cash. Why is there no cash in Nigeria? Hi, Aminat. Thanks for joining. Um, I don't know why there's no cash in Nigeria. What's going on? Like... Banks are not giving money. I tried to get some things in the market and there's no money. Like, there's literally no money. Hi, Jay, Jay, Jay Shum. Hi, Oni. I can't even pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Guys, let me, let me know. Are you seeing me in landscape mode or am I in portrait mode? Because the YouTube thingy is showing portrait mode. Hi, Ajiva. <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm murdering your name i'm really really sorry but let me know guys are you seeing me in portrait mode or are you seeing me in landscape mode because i'm seeing myself in landscape but the whole dimension everything is in okay landscape that's good so it doesn't mean that you're seeing me like the way it's supposed to be on a youtube video right because that's what i'm trying to achieve i don't want the portrait mode where there's the black frame by the sides and yes it's stressing my neck <laughs> Yes, beauty is stressing my neck. I'm trying to read um, what you guys are saying, but it's stressing my neck. But I'm going to try because the landscape mode looks better. Hi, Glory. Good afternoon. Welcome. But anyway, I've been trying to get money. Hi, Gifts. Welcome. I've been trying to get money, and there's no money. POS is not paying. There's no money every anywhere. Like It's so annoying because I tried to get some things in the market, and no money. I don't know what's going on in Nigeria, but let's just hope that everything normalizes and we are back to having like our normal cash flow and everything. But yeah, anyway, uh, I want us to talk. Okay. How is everybody doing? By the way, just let me know how you're doing. How's your day going? Hope everything is going well. Hope you're good. Hope you're not sick. Okay. You're good, right? I'm telling you end time. It's true. It, ha it has to be end time because why wouldn't there be money like flowing regularly? But well, anyway, let's just start. So um, I posted on my community tab like a few, I think a week or two ago that was, I wanted to go live and I wanted you guys to um, let me know what you wanted to, let me know what you guys wanted to talk about on the live stream. And I got some really, really interesting suggestions and I'm really, oh, thank you, Glory. And I'm really, really um, happy that you guys actually suggested some very, very good um, topics because... You know, this channel for the past two years, I've actually been doing YouTube for three years now. So for the past two years, this channel has been about cutting and sewing, cutting and sewing, cutting and sewing. It has been about drafting and cutting and sewing. But we know that um, making clothes, like actually sewing clothes, is like 30% of fashion <laughs> or 30% of running a fashion business. You and I, we both know. Because there are people that have... Um, there are people that have fashion houses or there are people that have um, fashion businesses and they don't even they don't even sew at all they don't do any sewing whatsoever probably what they do is simply um maybe get customers in and maybe design clothes and maybe do the finishing and then um organize the fitting with the client and all of that so um we know that actually sewing is just a fraction of the entire fashion business so I just thought that this live sessions would be nice. So we can talk about other aspects of fashion. Our regular videos can be the normal, you know, normal um, drafting and cutting and sewing and all that. But um, let's just do some let's just do some live streams like this that we talk about other things that is not sewing and cutting. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm going to start with which one do I start with now? So um, I got a couple of. A couple of um, suggestions like i mentioned and one of them was from ad neb renz I'm, i have in my book here where i wrote down your comments like your suggestions so that's what i'm reading from so one is from ad neb renz i'm sorry if i'm wondering your name again i'm really sorry but uh she said 
she's an apprentice and she wants to she needs motivation basically to push her when she wants to give up so i think she's learning how to sew from her comments she's learning how to sew and she wants motivation to <laughs> this is a very very good suggestion and i'll tell you why uh the reason is because guys <laughs> When I was learning how to sew, I learned how to sew in 2015 when I just graduated from um, when I just graduated from from university for my first degree. I learned how to sew, and you guys might not know this, but my mom sews. I actually learned how to sew from my mom's workers. My mom doesn't have the patience to, patience to um, teach anyone to sew, but uh, I go, I learned um, I learned sewing from her workers. Okay. And guys, it was one of the most challenging times in my life. You're seeing me now, I'm drafting, I'm cutting, I'm sewing. It wasn't always like this, so I've not always known how to sew this good. Although I know I'm still learning, I'm not perfect yet, I'm still learning. There are a lot of things I still don't know how to sew, so I'm still learning. But um, it didn't always start as me being this good. Do you understand? I remember that I learned how to sew, how to um, fix a zipper, like insert a zipper for three months. Can you believe that? Like for three whole months, I was learning how to fix just zipper. <laughs> this is something that I can fix now in minutes. But then I had to like, oh my God, I was learning how to fix zipper for three whole months. Oh God. And I used to cry. I can cry. You hey, you don't know me. <laughs> I can cry. My husband knows me now. I can cry. My mom, everybody knows me. My sister knows I can cry. My brother knows I can cry. If I cry here for you people. <laughs> So I used to cry a lot because I'm like, what is this? Is this how other people learned how to sew? Were they this frustrated? I was legit frustrated though. But honestly, what, one of the things that kept me going was the word of God. I'm not trying to preach, okay? But the word of God actually kept me going. And that the particular scripture is what I'm going to refer to because that was what I was always reciting. I was always saying it because it kept me going. It strengthened me. And that scripture was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That scripture is literally my, my motto, to be honest. Whenever I face any difficult thing, whenever I need to, um, whenever I face any challenge whatsoever, like it keeps me going because it really helps me in that time because I really wanted to give up. That's the truth. I wanted to give up several times. I was like, what is this? Maybe this sewing thing is not for me. <laughs> so I'm like, I beg, maybe I, sh I should just leave this thing, but... Um, the word of God kept reminding me that this is something I can do. Because the truth is, I can do all things. Okay, if I decide now I want to become a mechanic or I want to be an engineer, it's just money that will take me through uh, school to do another degree. But I can do it because I can do it. And I want you guys to think of yourselves that way as well. See yourself as someone that can do anything. That's the only way. Because it's not just sewing. Even if you say you don't want to learn sewing, sewing is too difficult. Whatever it is you want to learn from scratch and you don't know, have any idea of it, it will be difficult. Uh, Ajiva, your message is long, but I'm really trying to... <laughs> Hi, Mabel, welcome. I'm so sorry, I can't read what you wrote, Ajiva. I'm really, really sorry, but maybe towards the end of the stream, I'm going to like literally reply you guys one-on-one, -on -one, like read your messages. So I'm sorry, I, couldn't, I can't reply what you just um, sent, Ajiva. But yeah, um, that's how I want you guys to see yourself. See yourself as that person that can do anything. You can literally do anything. As long as you set your mind to it. I know it sounds like I'm, sounds like I'm a motivational speaker. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just trying to literally tell you guys how I motivated myself or how I kept myself encouraged to literally learn at least the basics of sewing. Now, the good thing about sewing is that once you learn the basics, you are ready to fly, literally. Once you know the basics, you know how to draft a basic bodice, you know how to draft a basic sleeve, you know how to um, create gathers, you know how to do pleats, just the basics. Once you know the basics, everything else flows. Now, once you know the basics and then you start sewing for people, you get exposed to more styles because customers might maybe send you a style and say, okay, I want you to sew this dress for me or this top for me. And uh, when it comes to that, that point, all you have to do now is work on style interpretation, okay? There's something called style interpretation. So if your sense is style, you need to dissect it, literally, like, dissect the, the style. What, is the, what does the sleeve look like? Hi, beauty. Oh, Philippians 4.13. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is exactly the scripture. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That scripture is so powerful. The entire Bible is powerful, but that one is the one that really, really, really kept me going. So, yeah, um... When it comes to style interpretation, you have to dissect the style. 
what does the neck look like? Is it a round neck? Is it a V-neck? Is it an off shoulder? What does the high Doris welcome? What does the um the sleeves look like? Is it flare sleeves? Is it gathered sleeves? Is it pleated sleeves? Is it gigot sleeve? I have a lot of sleeve tutorials on my channel. Uh yeah. But um, you have to dissect the style. What does the body look like? Is it a princess that bustier? Is it a corset? Is it just a, a, a bodice without any darts or anything? So you have to work on style interpretation. But that is only after you are done with the basics. You cannot say, okay, um, I know the basics, so I'm going to stick with the basics. No, style is something that evolves. Or let me, or let me say fashion, rather. Hi, Esther. Welcome. Um, fashion is something that evolves, okay? Fashion evolves. The styles we were rocking last year, we're not rocking them this year. Maybe some of them we are, but for the most part, we're not rocking some styles that we rocked last year. We're not rocking them this year. Do you understand? So anyway, that is actually the major thing that motivated me to, to uh, when I was learning how to sew. So I believe, I hope I've answered your question or your, I hope I've touched on your topic, on your topic suggestion, Renz. So let's move on to the next uh, suggestion or the next topic suggestion. Um, one says, Maureen Maureen says, challenges in sewing. So uh, she was asking, like, how can she deal with the challenges of sewing? So I think it's, it's actually hand in hand with what I just talked about. You just have to be consistent. You have to persevere. It's not easy to learn anything new. Okay, you have to persevere. You have to remember the reason why you decided to learn how to sew. Whether you're learning how to sew because you want an extra source of income, or you're learning how to sew because you just want to learn a new skill, or you're learning how to sew because you have passion for it, all these reasons are good reasons. It's not only when you have passion for sewing or passion for something that you, you should learn it. No, even if you see something and, okay, this is something I can do, you can go ahead and learn it. It doesn't take anything from you. It only takes your time. It only takes your commitment. Do you understand? So you have to... You have to basically persevere. Persevere, persevere, persevere. Keep practicing. Keep trying to learn um, techniques that would make the sewing easier. Does that make sense? There's YouTube now. There are a lot of resources online. There are ebooks. There are a lot of resources online that you can use to, um, will I say, make the sewing journey easier. Between uh, tailoring and fashion designing. Okay. Um, Glory is asking whether there's a difference between tailoring and fashion designing. There's a huge difference. <laughs> there's a world of difference between tailoring and fashion design. Uh, I just want to touch that quickly so we can touch the other topics as well. So tailoring basically is sewing, cutting and sewing. That's tailoring. Cut and sew. You measure the clients, cut the, cut the clothes and sew. Now, most times, tailoring um, usually incorporates... Um, there's no, there's no um, designing in tailoring. Does that make sense? So you're not actually like sketching a new design in tailoring. Most times tailoring is um, a person says, okay, this is the style I want to sew. Sew it for me. And then you're trying to copy someone else's style. You're trying to, re let me not say copy. <laughs> you're trying to um, recreate someone else's design. That's tailoring. That's tailoring. You want to cre recreate a design that's already been created and then you're, obviously um sorry and then you're obviously um sewing it to the fit like to fit the client and then they come in they do fitting they pay your money that's tailoring very simple cut and sew but when it comes to fashion designing you're talking about a lot you're talking about um designing a new outfit you're doing sketches you're doing illustrations you are you are creating something new that's fashion design even if it might have aspects some aspects of an already existing design you are still trying to make something new so a lot of us in nigeria to be honest we are doing tailoring <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that okay we are doing tailoring but when you come when it comes to real real fashion design it's creating a design when i was in the uk i wanted to um do a i wanted to do a course in fashion designing and one of the requirements was i needed to get a portfolio and then what the portfolio um, was supposed to entail was or is the was at the is <laughs> but anyway the portfolio I, I was required required to um provide needed to have sketches and illustrations and at that time i did not have any sketch i just had pictures of um dresses that i made for my clients 
and pictures that they were putting on and then i compiled that in a in a book and i submitted it but they were like no <laughs> sorry they were like no it has to be original designs it has to be sketches my own sketches my own original sketches so that's one major um major 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 um aspect of fashion designing that is not in tailoring okay there are other things that differentiate tailoring from fashion designing but i guess i'm probably going to do a video on that or something but that's the major major difference so i hope i've answered your question glory there's more to say on that but for now i think that's that's what i can say about fashion fashion designing and tailoring okay so yeah let's move on to the next suggestion so williams i'm trying to um, go through the beginner related questions first before i get into the more advanced questions Does that makes sense so we have williams william emanuela she asked how to get over the phobia of cutting clothes now um she's i think from her message she's probably a beginner i'm not sure but she says or she's asking how to you're welcome glory but she's asking how to get over the phobia of cutting clothes now this phobia of cutting clothes is not just a phobia that beginners have even advanced people that are very are like are high up like the advanced tailors or the advanced fashion designers they also have that phobia as well esther can you really be good at making different kinds of dresses by watching youtube and online videos yes you can but the thing is you need to you need to know the basics okay that's what i'm answering esther's question now so esther is asking whether you can really be good in sewing and fashion designing by watching youtube videos and online courses and online videos yes you can as long as you know the basics as long as you can sew a straight and a curved line with your sewing machine and as long as you have a sewing machine to practice at home now um whenever i want to enroll anyone for any of my online classes i usually ask do you have a sewing machine that you have you, you that you have access to a sewing machine and i also ask them can you sew straight and curved lines because once you know how to do do those two things i believe if you are a i believe you can honestly i don't know i know that some for some people it might be difficult some people are actually slow learners uh some people it might be difficult some people actually need someone to literally hold their hand Um, Glory, I can't really, I didn't, I couldn't read your message, so I'm going to respond to that later. I'm sorry. But yeah, um, some people actually need to be held and then shown the ropes. Do you understand? Some people actually need that one-on-one -on -one physical training for them to really, really um, excel when it comes to sewing. However, some other people, once they know the basics, quick, quick, they can just jump in and then use online classes online um, courses to brush up <laughs> i said classes <laughs> online courses to brush up do you understand so i feel like you have to be truthful to yourself okay be truthful to yourself when it comes to learning how fast are you when it comes to learning are you someone that once they just tell you this that that you're able to pick up easily or are you someone that needs someone to really really explain and break things down both whether you're someone that learns quickly or slowly it's okay it's fine it doesn't it doesn't stop anything but you have to be truthful to yourself so that you can decide whether online learning or physical learning you have to decide which one works for you and that will be determined by how quickly you learn and pick up new things do you understand but i believe that if you know the basics you can actually learn how to sew online youtube um online courses okay there are very very detailed videos online that you can actually use to learn um these things but yeah let's move on please so the phobia of cutting clothes i was saying that that's a phobia that not only beginners face even if you are ad advanced in sewing you still have the phobia hi doris welcome so even if you're a an advanced fashion designer you still have that phobia because new designs are coming every day when i learned how to sew eh i did not learn corsets let me just be honest with you guys. When I learned how to sew, I did not learn corsets. There was no corset. Corset was not a thing at that time. That was in 2015, like I said. That was when I learned how to sew. There was no corset. I learned pieces that was tear, yes. But there was no corset. But now there is corset. Does it mean I'll fold my arms and say, oh, I'm not going to sew corset because I did not learn it when I was learning how to sew? No. I have to keep up. I have to keep doing upgrades. 
same thing with you as well you have to keep doing upgrades you may have learned how to sew 10 years ago or 15 years ago okay but I just remember this Zig, uh, Zig Saloma. I don't know if you guys watch him. He's a comedian on YouTube and Facebook everywhere. He usually says, one of his characters, I'm not sure which one, he, um, he Abhi, she, she usually says, um, I've been doing this for 33 years. So some people are actually that proud. You can just stay and say, oh, I've, I've been sewing for 33 years or I've been sewing for 15 years, so I don't need to learn anything new. No, fashion, like I said, is evolving. Fashion keeps evolving, okay? So it's important that you keep upgrading. You keep going for upgrades. You keep signing up for courses. You, you keep both physical and online. You keep, you keep upgrading yourself bas basically, okay? It's very, very important. So that phobia when it comes to cutting clothes, I feel like the easiest way to get over that phobia, or will I say the easiest way to manage that phobia is when you are faced with a new style or a new design, okay? That's for someone that's advanced. When you're faced with a new style or a new design, it's important that you sew it for yourself first. That's the advice I'll give anybody. Sew it for yourself first. Do you understand? Before you jump in and then cut someone else, a client's fabric, and then ruin it, okay? And then you have to pay for it. I don't want that for any of you, okay? <laughs> Please. So you have to um, try it on yourself. Get a fabric. Even if you don't have a lot of money, get a very cheap fabric. You can get Ankara now, three yards, for as low as 1,000 Naira. I know that might still be a lot of money for some people. That's fine. You can save up and get the fabric and use it. Or you can even get lining. You don't need to get like an actual fabric. You can get lining. Lining, 200, 250, depending on your area, 250, 300 Naira. You can get one yard or two yards of lining. And then use it to practice that particular style that you want to sew for the client. Before you jump in and then sew, because when you sew it for yourself the first time using your measurements, you are going to know what mistakes you made, you made, okay? You're going to see, okay, this is the way I need to focus on. I need to find out how this part is done. I need to find out how this sleeve is done, okay? Or the, if it's the collar or something that is quite difficult. When you do it the first time, okay, it's easier for you to say, okay, this is, this is, um, easier, easier for you to say, okay, this is the problem area I'm going to have when I'm sewing it for the client. And then you try to find out how to um, get that particular aspect or that particular part of the garment. Does that make sense? And then in that case, if you find that that particular part is, is a problem to you, you can go online. You can search for... Now, the issue when it comes to going online might be you might not know the name of that particular um, design, right? You may not know that that is called a turtleneck. You may not know that it's called a gigot sleeve. And then you might be faced with, okay, how do I search for this thing? So that's the basic, basic, basic um, challenge you might get when it comes to searching, right? But um, in that case, what you can do is you can meet someone else that sews. Maybe someone that um, it's, it's more, that someone that is more advanced than you are in sewing, that has more experience in sewing. You can meet them. Um, hi, Shield. Habiba. Hi, Habiba. Welcome. So yeah, you can meet someone that is more advanced in sewing, that's more experienced. You can meet them, and meet them and ask them, okay, how can I sew this? Even online, you can make friends with other people that sew. It's not a crime. We're not doing competition. It's not competition, guys, okay? Remove the mindset that you are competing with everybody. It's not a competition. Even I, I make sewing tutorials. Um... If you want to join my online online class, you can send me a, a, a message on Instagram at d underscore silem. Yeah. So you can meet other um, people that sew. Even me, I make tutorials on sewing and cutting, but I also make friends with other fashion tutors on YouTube. I'm friends with Vivian Okeke. You guys might know her. Yes. So I make friends with other fashion tutors because we're not competing. It's just, we're all just one big family trying to teach you guys or trying to help you guys um, learn how to sew. Do you understand? So you can ask other people that sew, ask them, okay, how do I cut this sleeve? Okay, how do I cut this collar? How do I sew this part? And if they are being honest, they would actually help you. That's the key, honesty. They might not be honest. They might not want you to learn that thing. They might be jealous that, ah, you're... You want to you want to give me something to help you and do you don't know how to sew yet you're, you're taking customers clothes if you if you are faced with that kind of thing or if you meet someone like that please avoid them <laughs> avoid them 
Meet the ones that you know are honest with you, that don't mind teaching you that thing. They are not jealous of the fact that you are sewing and then, or maybe you're getting customers and they are not. Or you once had this phobia, Doris. Yeah. Even me, if, I, if I'm faced with a new style, there's a new design now. There's this fear of, ah, now, wow, they've come again. They want to finish us with style. <laughs> there's this phobia of, ah, um, how will I call this one now? Do you understand? Everybody has that phobia. It's normal. And I feel like it's a good phobia because if you are able to push on and actually do that thing that is, that is scary, you're able to overcome that fear. Do you understand? And overcoming fear is one of the most powerful things you can do. Do you understand? So I think it's a good phobia. So yeah, that's the major um, advice I'll give to, to overcome the phobia of um, cutting or ruining a customer's fabric. Just sew it for yourself first. Be sure that you have a hang of it. Be sure that you now understand how it is done before you proceed to cutting the customer's clothes. Okay? Yes. So I think that's, that settles that. <laughs> Let's move on. It's already we've already been live for 26 minutes already. Like now, 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 26 minutes has gone. Um, so Ashin Nedun, I'm sorry if I murdered your name. Ashin Nedun says how to meet up with client order without workers. So maybe what he means is um, how do you meet up with a client order or client orders when you're working alone? There's no help. That is very, very, very difficult. Even for me, when I have a lot of orders, I'm like, God. Sometimes I stay up late at night to sew. It's a lot of work. Sewing is very stressful. You can't even tell me anything. Sewing is very, very stressful. And you need help. You really, really do need help. When I was in Portacot, I had help. Uh, I had someone that helped me to sew. She was, she was still learning, but she was, she was really good with helping me. I, what I would do is I would actually cut the top half so like the princess that was here the corset i'll cut that part and i'll sew it but then i'll cut the bottom part for her and then she would actually join them join the bottom part so if it's like a gown i'll cut the skirt part she'll turn the skirt with the lining that's it she'll turn the fabric with the lining she'll join it by the sides put the zipper and all that so when i'm ready to join it to the top part all i have to do is just grab it and join it so it made my life so much easier thank you so much i didn't get your name but thank you so much thank you uh so she made my life so much easier. So if you can, get someone to help you. Please. So you don't... Stress is real, okay? Stress is real and it is... Stress is not good. <laughs> my dad always says that stress does not kill anybody. But, Omo, ah, I beg to defer. Stress can low-key kill you. Not like literal death, but stress can really weigh you down, can really get you... Oh, almost stress is not just not just a good thing it may not literally kill you but it's not a good thing okay so try and get help so to answer your question how to meet up clients orders without any help so without workers what i'll say is take what you can finish see the worst thing you can do for yourself is be that tailor that disappoints ah almost i am stressed sometimes so esther she said i don't look stressed I am stressed sometimes, so sometimes I am very, very stressed even. So I'm glad that I don't look stressed in my videos. So they always say that. Um, they always say, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> that is true for me. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through because I've been through a lot, especially in this sewing business. It's not easy. So what I'll say here is take as much as you can finish. Do not be that... Um, Okay, oh, if I just enjoy yourself in the comment in the chat there. <laughs> but anyway, um, like I said, take what you can finish. Do not go and take um, 20 orders when you know you cannot finish it. Because see, even if you make 50 clothes for a particular client, eh, and then you make one bad one, that one bad one usually stands out more than the 50. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Let me know if you've experienced that. You sew, you sew, 50 clothes, perfect fits. You deliver on time. Everything is great. The one clothes you now sew and you don't sew it well, they'll carry it on their head. Some even go on social media and say what I ordered versus what I got. It is well. <laughs> it is well. That's all I can say. So please, take what you can finish. If you know you have no help, nobody is helping you. If it is 10 clothes you can take, 
take them and charge the customer well. We're going to talk about charging customers in a minute or two. But charge the customer well so that you know that the 10 clothes you've taken can sustain you, okay? If it's 10 you've taken, take it and charge them well. So that not that you take 10 clothes and you think charge one, 1,000, 1,000. At the end of the day, you are stressed and you are, there's no money to show for it because you've spent all the money they paid you on the fabrics you on the materials for the clothes or the for the dress you've got you, you you wanted to make or you're making you've spent all the money on materials or you spend the money on fuel or you spend the money on transport to the market and back do you understand you have to charge very well the key is charging people like their top fashion designers that charge four hundred thousand naira for one dress one dress we, we are still charging five thousand six thousand there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with charging 5,000, but make sure that it is worth your time. Make sure that you are charging your worth. You are, your time is not, oh, how do I explain this thing, guys? Your time is not useless. Like, your time is valuable. Do you understand? If we were, if we were in, in a country where we were paid hourly, maybe we would value our time better. Over in other countries that they are paid hourly, you, your time is of the essence. Like, see, if you work for one hour and it's eight pounds or eight dollars you're earning, you will get your eight dollars. If you work for 10 hours, you get $80. Nobody is dragging in with you. So they value your time. So that is how you should value your time as well. The time you sit down and you make, imagine how long it takes to make a corset, a corset dress. You do the cup, you gum, you buy breast cup, you attach the breast cup, you put bone in, you do loops, or is it eyelets? You put your eyelets, you, ah, or more. You do the skirt parts, you put zipper, you iron it. Oh my God. And after everything, you collect 5,000 naira. Inside the 5,000 naira, you use 4,000 to buy materials. Okay, you can hear me without the mic, that's good. So there are basically two methods of pricing, okay? There's the competitive pricing and then there's the value-based pricing. So when it comes to competitive pricing, that's what a lot of us do. So you hear that the, the tailor down the road is charging 5,000 naira for an Ankara dress. No, just Ankara like that, no lace, nothing, just Ankara, simple Ankara dress. You hear that the tailor down the road is ch charging 5,000 naira. And so you too, because you guys are in the same proximity, the same area, you decide that, okay, I'll be charging 5,000 naira. Now, you've not gone to look at that tailor's work. You've not gone to see their finishing. You've not gone to see how they pad their bustier. You've not gone to see what kind of breast cup they use. You don't know the kind of breast cup they use. You don't know the kind of lining they use, whether they are using cutting lining or they are using plunging lining. You don't know the kind of lining they use. You don't know the quality of the work. You just see it and you say, okay, that's the price I'm going to be charging. That's wrong. Now there's the value-based pricing. Value-based pricing is when you look at your, what you are, bring, what you are bringing to the table, if that makes sense what you are putting into that outfit to make it what it is. Now, you guys know that in the markets, right? In markets, they sew in the markets, right? Now, you can come to a market now and say, sew this outfit for me, now, now, now. They will sew it now, 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 now. <laughs> Do you understand? Hi, Joyce, welcome. Um, they will sew it now, now, now. Do you understand? They don't iron it. Some places, I'm not saying all the markets. Some of the markets I've seen, they don't iron. They just cut it, sew it, sharp, sharp, with their manual machine. And your dress is ready in the next hour or thereabouts. But you, on the other hand, you are ironing, you are gumming, you're using your interfacing. There are a lot of things that you put together to make your outfit what it is. So you have to charge based on the value-based pricing method, not the competitive pricing method. Do you understand? Not the competitive. You price based on, or you charge based on the value-based pricing. So look at your work. What am I doing? You are getting breast cup. Now breast cup is 500 naira for one. Ah, my battery said is dying. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Now breast cup is 5,000 naira. I um, say 5,000, Jesus. God do not allow you to get to that point. <laughs> breast cup now is 500 naira for one. Do you understand? So you have to see or look at what it is you are offering. So that's one aspect. Now the second aspect is there are several factors you have to consider before you price or charge a, a, a client for a garment. Number one, the cost of materials. That's the one that all of us know, and that's what all of us do. Cost of materials. <laughs> so if you are, you want to sew an Ankara dress, for example, 
or let me just say you want to sew a lace dress okay you want to sew a lace dress and now this lace dress you are going to buy doll face satin you are going to buy lining you are going to buy breast cup you are going to buy interfacing maybe paper stay you're going to also buy hair stay you're going to buy zipper you're going to buy thread what else are you going to buy again you're going to buy um, let me just say let's assume it's a, a regular um, princess that was not a corset okay you're going to buy all these things okay now you have to write down everything you're going to buy doll face how many years are you buying you write it down lining you write it down everything list it down write down the prices for one unit by one unit i mean one yard one yard or in the case of breast cup one one pair of breast cup right or one pair of breast cups you write everything down now you have to factor in your transports to the market and back now if you have places or shops around you that sell these materials you're better off buying from them than traveling to the market exactly exactly some of us also use gas to iron see so there are a lot of things that goes into making a garment like i said so you have to factor in all of those things now your transportation is another thing if you use fuel like me now it's difficult for me to sew without lights or without power supply because you're going to go interfacing needs iron to to stick to the fabric or the lining so it's difficult to iron if you're really really sewing well it's difficult to work without lights do you understand so you have to factor in your fuel and all of that now transportation you have to factor it in going to the market and back now if you have people that around you that are selling sewing materials you're better off buying from them the reason is because that way you don't have to worry about transport now when you're thinking, thinking about transport also think of your time it's not just transport the time you use and travel to the market i'm still calling it travel because <laughs> it's a it's a journey now see now this person says she can't even cut without light exactly so it's a huge factor so imagine the time you use and go if you're living in lagos traffic will hold you on the road you can be on the road to and fro you can spend an hour two hours just going to the market to buy things that two hours you'd have used it to do something else <laughs> so okay so my husband just walked in with cereal trying to do me longer truth but i am strong in the lord <laughs> so yeah you have to factor in your time you're going to use to travel to the place and buy and come back so what i'll advise you guys is when it comes to getting materials try and buy in bulk when it comes to things that you use often like in um hair stay i use hair stay for everything apart from things that um, don't require it okay i use hair stay to make an akara dress i use it to make a lace dress if you know that you use hair stay a lot buy it in bulk if you know you use paper stay a lot buy it in bulk my mom like i said my mom sews although she doesn't like physically sew on the sewing machine now but in her shop right she buys hair stay in rolls like a roll of hair stay you see hair stay in rolls like the same way you go and buy <laughs> okay ajiba the same way you go and buy hair stay in the market my mom buys the roll and comes back and keeps in her shop and the reason is because when you buy in bulk you cut costs and it it applies to everything even in buying things for your kitchen when you buy in bulk you cut costs and everyday prices are increasing so if you buy hair stay 500 naira today next week or next month it might be 550 in six months time it might be 600 naira so for each time you go and buy you're spending more money but if you buy it in bulk maybe you bought it at 400 naira when you bought it if you keep you're using it using it using it and it's still remaining you're still using it and then six months later you still have it in your shop you're using it someone else might be going to the market and buying hair stay now at 600 but you're still using your hair stay you got at 400 naira so can you see that you're cutting costs by buying in bulk i see people that take transport they carry their bags go to the market to buy one zipper one one zipper <laughs> like why why do you understand buy it in bulk especially when it comes to colors that you use often like black black is something that you can use for a lot of outfits a lot of dresses or things you're making buy it in bulk do you understand buy it in bulk buy black lining in bulk buy um hair stay in bulk all these things buy it in bulk that way you cut costs and you also save your time the time you would have used to go to the market 
and come back. You would use it, you just use it right there in your shop or your house, wherever it is you sew, and you just get to work. Do you understand? So that's one method of saving costs and um, also helping yourself when it comes to charging. So guys, after you've written down the cost of all your materials, you have to consider, like I said, your transport. So that's one thing, your transport, the cost of materials. Now, cost of labor. Cost of labor. If you have tailors that are sewing for you, how much do, you, do they um, charge um, for one dress? How much do they charge for one dress? How much do you pay them, these tailors, to sew one dress for you? If it's an Ankara short dress, how much do they charge? Do they charge, um, do they um, take 5,000 naira for one dress? If they take, if your tailor is taking five thousand naira for one dress, what makes you think you will charge? You should charge seven thousand naira. If the tailor is taking five thousand naira just for labor, and then you have two thousand naira left, maybe you, let's say you charge seven thousand naira. Your tailor takes five thousand. You now have two thousand naira. That two thousand naira, will you use it? What will you use it for? Will you use it to buy the materials, or is it for fuel? So think of cost of labor. Figure, um, take into account how much you pay your tailors. And then know that that is aside. You add your cost of materials again to that to know how much you can charge. That's not all though, there are more factors. Now if you are sewing the clothes yourself, maybe you don't have any tailor, also factor in your cost of labor. You are also, in that case you are a laborer. <laughs> you are the one doing the work. So factor in your cost of labor. Because think about it, if you were working for someone, wouldn't they pay you for sewing the clothes? They will. Even if they are not, uh, uh, they will pay you definitely for sewing the clothes. So factor in your own cost of labor. So add, when you've added, okay, let, let's, let's be practical, guys. So let me just say, you want to sew an Ankara dress, and the cost of materials for everything you want to buy for the Ankara dress is 3,000 naira. I'm writing it down, 3,000 naira. That's the cost of materials. Cost of materials, 3,000 naira. Now, cost of labor. Let's assume that you have a tailor that you paid for the, you're paying for, to sew that dress, and you now, um, you're paying the tailor for that Ankara dress, you're paying them, let's say, uh, you're paying them 2,000 naira. Okay, no, let me say 3,000. You're paying them 3,000 naira to sew that dress. So that's an extra 3,000 naira. So that's label. I'm writing it down, see it? <laughs> I'm writing it down so that we can practically do this thing. So the next thing you have to think about is your transportation. Whether you are going to buy it or not, add your transportation. Do you understand? Yes, you might have bought your materials in bulk. You may have them in your shop as we speak, but still factor in your transportation. Still factor in your transportation. So let's say transportation to and fro, let's just say 500 naira. Let's not be too, let's just say 500 naira for transportation. Now, the next thing you have to think about is your fuel. Cost for um, you know, your fuel or power supply, and also your rent. Your rent though, even if you're staying in your house to sew, factor in your rent. Factor in your rent, even if you're sewing from home. Because that will give you, that will help you um, um, develop the habit of charging like that. So when you now get a rental space, you don't start, wondering how to charge or you don't start undercharging because you're now in a rental space do you understand and also customers eh, let me tell you guys something about customers customers they follow you the way you follow them so if you start charging a customer three thousand naira for an Ankara dress the day you wake up and say you want to charge five thousand naira, they'll say ah why what's the problem why are you charging five thousand naira now they would not mind the fact that the cost of materials have increased in price they, they don't they don't send that one they, they don't send that one at all they want you to charge at three thousand naira today 2023 they want you to still charge three thousand naira in 2028 you should still be charging three thousand naira for the same dress it doesn't work that way so all these things i'm telling you now will give you will help you develop that habit of charging enough so that even if cost of materials increase even if um, your tailor wakes up one morning and says i don't want to be taking three thousand naira to sew an ankara dress i want to now be taking um, 10,000 naira to sew an Ankara dress. You will not feel too, you will not be too shocked or it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really affect your, your pricing. And also your customer as well will not be too shocked if you just wake up one morning and say, ah, I want to charge 5,000 naira. Do you understand? So we've talked about cost of materials, we've talked about cost of labor, we've talked about transportation. Now we've also talked about rent, right? 
your rent. We've, all, we're also, we've also talked about power supply. Power supply, maybe, maybe um, NEPA bill, ZPHCN, they call themselves these days. <laughs> PHCN bill, uh, whether it's prepaid or postpaid, whatever it is, you're sharp paying for lights. And then cost of fuel as well. You have to factor that in. In a month, how much do you spend on fuel? You have to factor that into your price. So let's, let's be practical, like I said. I think this is going to be the last um, topic we're going to talk about because we've been talking for 15 minutes already. So I think the other suggestions, we'll have to move them to the next live stream. So yeah, let's be practical. So let's assume that you pay 150,000 Naira for rent. Hmm? 150,000 Naira for rent every month. If you have a shop, that's how much you pay. But even if you're in your house, let's assume that your house is your shop, okay? So how much do you pay for rent in your house? Let's say it's 150,000 Naira. So 150,000 Naira divided by 12 months. I don't know maths. Babe, please help me and divide. <laughs> 150,000 divided by 12. <laughs> you're on camera, so you can't even say no. <laughs> but you're not literally on camera, but they know you're here. 12.5. So 150,000 divided by 12 is 12.5. Now, baby, please, 12.5 divided by 30 days. So, let's say divided by 12, okay. 4, 4, 4, 16, huh? 416, yeah, okay. So 12.5 now, okay. So you pay 150,000 for your rent. Divide that by 12 months in a year. That is um, 12,500. Now divide that 12,500 by 30 days. What you have is 416 naira. So in a month, Every month, you must bring out 416 Naira for your rent. Every month. Now, you can divide this amongst your customers. Maybe you have 10 customers or you have 20 customers. Divide this amount by that amount, that number of customers you get. So you know the, the average number of customers you get a month. Obviously, it can increase for some months. It can reduce for some months as well. Okay, so you have to divide that amongst the average number of customers you get in a month. So it's a new month, you may not know how many customers you get that day or how many orders you get that day. But you have to divide it. Just do a rough estimate, an average. Guys, my battery is dying, I have to leave soon. So just do a rough estimate or an average of how much you spend. Do you understand? Or how much, uh, how many customers you get. Do you understand? Now, you have 416, right? So that 416, like I said, like I said let's assume that you, have, you usually have 10 orders every month. 10 orders every month, every month. So that means you have about 41 Naira for one, right? I guess, 416 divided by 10. That should be about 41 Naira, of, let's just say approximately 42 Naira. So in every, for every order, add 42 Naira for your rent. So let's add that 42 Naira. Like I told you, we are being practical. So you've added 42 Naira for the rent. Now power supply, how much do you pay in a month for NEPA bill? Let's assume that every month you spend 5,000 Naira. I'm just giving an instance. Every month you spend 5,000 Naira. Now if you spend 5,000 Naira, we are still using the 10 customers or the 10 orders rule, right? Now divide 5,000 by 10. That should give you, I think, 500. So 500 Naira. So for each customer or for each order you get, add 500 Naira for your power supply. <clears throat> So now, with this my practical example, right? Let me sum up how much we have. So we have 3,000 Naira for cost of materials, 3,000 Naira for cost of labor, 500 Naira for transportation, 42 Naira for rent. Let's just approximate that to 50 Naira. 50 Naira for rent. And for power supply, supply 500 Naira. So that is, how much is that? So we have five, uh, let's see. So what you have is a total of 7,050 Naira. Please help me calculate though, maybe I'm, I'm getting it wrong. 3,000 for cost of labor, 3,000 for um, cost of materials, transportation 500 Naira, rent 50 Naira, power supply 500 Naira. Yeah, just hold on, let me get my power bank and my charger so I know my phone doesn't die.
Okay, so I've, I'm charging my phone now, so hopefully it doesn't die on me. So yes, the total is about 7,050 Naira, right? Okay, so it means that for that Ankara dress, you're charging 7,050 Naira. So obviously, you might choose to take out the 15 Naira and then put it at 7,000 Naira. Or you might choose to just put it at 7,5 to be on the safe side. 7.5. So do you see how you can cost, you can price or you can charge a customer? There are other factors but these are the major ones that are very, very important. These are the major ones. Another thing is, you may have more than one person helping you to sew. Now, yes, the tailor might be charging 3000 naira for labor, but let me say you have an apprentice. Okay, no, apprentice will not take any money now. Let's assume you have someone that is just helping you and then you pay the person um, a salary. Let's assume you pay them 20,000 Naira salary or 30,000 Naira salary, for example. You have to also factor in that amount you're paying the person because the person is also helping you make that dress or make that garment. So everything that goes into producing that dress must be taken into account. Everything that that you need to produce that garment must be taken into account. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to get lining 500 naira, I'm going to get satin 1000 naira, so I'm going to charge 3000 naira for the dress. You'll be running at a loss. You, you realize that you're stressed because sewing is very stressful. You realize that you are stressed, and at the end of the day, you still have nothing to show for it because all of the money you've charged has gone into cost of materials or has gone into labor or has gone into fuel exactly that reminds me yes power supply i only put nepa below there there's still fuel remember you buy fuel <laughs> so add your fuel if you pay for nepa and you also buy fuel in case there's no light add that as well to your costing so that you know exactly how much you are making out of it now this is just one aspect though there's still more we can talk about when it comes to charging but for now i'm just going to leave you guys with that one because hey, there's a lot we can talk about charging customers with. let me just quickly run through the other one final suggestion that you guys made so actually this particular suggestion this um, how to price or how to charge a customer was actually suggested by zoe so thank you zoe for that suggestion so the next one or the next the next um the next suggestion i'm going to talk about before we end this live stream is um still from zoe she says um i should talk about the things or what it takes to set up a commercial dressmaking venture so what it takes to set up a sewing business basically so um for different different countries it differs okay but we're talking about Nigeria because we're in Nigeria, or most of us are in Nigeria. So when it comes to setting up a fashion business in Nigeria, before you jump and go and rent a shop, <laughs> let me just advise you first. Calm down. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry, okay? You have to think about your customer base, how much you generate a month before you run and go and rent a shop. Because you might rent a shop now. It's not just about renting a shop, but you have to furnish it. Because you, you will not rent a space and then leave it empty and then expect your customers to walk in and sit on the floor. It doesn't work that way. When you rent a shop, you're still going to furnish the place. You need to get mannequins, you need to get sewing machines, you need to get workers, or maybe if you decide to work by yourself, you can't do it on your own, like I said. You need help. So you might get maybe an apprentice that can help you, you teach them and then they also help you or something sharp but you shall need to take into account the help you get or take into account the fact that you need to pay your employee, um, employees and then what else again think about um cost of you know fuel like because if you have a shop like a proper shop that is furnished and all you have tailors that are sewing you may not as you cannot expect them to wait for lights to come before they sew because they left their houses in the morning. They said they are going to work. They cannot come and sit down in your shop idle because there is no light. So you need to provide power supply. You need to have a generator. You need to find out how much it is to, how much a generator costs. Do you understand? You get a good generator. And not just any generator. Okay. 
thank you gifts. Um, if I find gift, thank you. So you need to um, factor all those, put all those things into consideration. Do you understand? So you're not just getting any generator. Because if you're going to be using industrial sewing machines, you can't use any generator. You need to use a very good generator that's going to be able to power two or three industrial sewing machines. You may get an industrial weaving machine as well. And those things consume a lot of power. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Don't just be in a hurry to go and rent a shop and start business. Calm down first. Count your costs first. Sit down. Write down all the things you're going to need to set up this business. Write everything down. Yes, the most important one is your clientele. The most important one is your customer base. What are your customers like? How many customers do you have in a month? How many customers do you have in a year? How many orders do you get in a month? Yes, exactly. Uh, Jane. Jane says, a gen that can also power your iron. The irons that tailors we use, <laughs> very, very heavy things. Like these irons are very, very, I think they are called industrial irons, if I'm not mistaken. So those ones also consume a lot of power. So take that into account. Do you understand? So what was I even saying Seth, before I was interrupted? <laughs> I forgot what I was saying now, now, now. <laughs> But anyway, so you have to consider all those things. How many customers do you get in a month? How many customers do you get in a year? How many orders do you get? Now, if you're sure that, okay, your customers, your orders are, okay, yes, you have a good amount of orders coming in every month. You have a good number of customers that are regular. So they come back again and again and again. And you're also getting some new customers frequently as well. If that is the case, then beautiful, okay? You can now think of, okay, maybe the space you're currently working in in your house is small and you're not able to, um, you know, um, you're not able to attend to a lot of customers in that small space because your customers might want to come for fitting and you're worried that, okay, the space you have in your house is small. Then you can think of opening a, 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 a fashion business, getting a rental space. Well, like I said, you have to take into account all these different things, Okay. Another important thing when it comes to um, setting up a fashion business is, I wrote it down, let me just open it quickly. Another thing you have to think about when you're thinking about setting up a fashion um, business or when you're thinking about employing tailors to work for you is how are they going to be paid? Very, very important. Are you going to use the commission-based payments or are you going to use the salary-based payments? Are you going to pay them based on commission? So is it when they sew one dress, you take out a part of that amount you charge the client and then use it to pay the tailors? Or are you going to pay them a flat salary? You have to think of, of that as well. And also, the tailors that are going to work for you, how are they going to do the work? Are, are they going to cut and are they going to sew? Or are you going to do the cutting and then they are going to do the sewing? Or are you going to create patterns that they are going to use to now sew whatever garments? For example, if you're doing like ready to wear, <clears throat> if you're doing like ready to wear, you may have like a collection, you may have um, specific designs that you you regularly sew. Do you understand? So if you're ready to wear, you may have a particular design and then you sew it regularly, maybe in different different sizes and all of that. Now, if that's the case, your best bet is to get a pattern or get patterns. For those ready to wear outfit that you know that you sew all the time so that the tailor doesn't come every morning and start cutting and they'll start cutting the same thing every day they are cutting that same style every day they are cutting that same style it's not beneficial it's not going to help your time in the long run like i said time is very very very, very valuable <laughs> i'm not stammering <laughs> okay jane says her house is big enough i don't intend going out okay i can't really read your message now jane but i'll definitely reply it later okay Okay, I'm glad. Okay, let's get back. Let's get. Let's not get distracted. <laughs> so, um, you have to consider all these things. Okay. So, if you know that you have designs that are sewn every time in your shop, or every time, every time, get patterns. Get them in different sizes. Okay. If you sew, if you regularly sew size eight to size twenty. Get your patterns. Get size eight. Get size twelve. Get size ten. Like that, all the way to size twenty, and then give them to your tailors and say this is my pattern use this pattern to cut use it to sew 
that way you reduce mistakes when it comes to sewing you 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 reduce <laughs> you reduce fitting errors as well if you know you have a standard pattern that you use for your cutting and all of that and sewing it will reduce error so your customer doesn't always complain ah this thing this thing you sewed for me is too tight it's too loose it doesn't fit right but if you use patterns that are there right it will reduce fitting errors it will reduce sewing errors it will really really help you that's in the case of ready to wear but if you do custom made so like bespoke tailoring tailoring where your customer comes and says okay i want this design and then you make the design maybe you do a sketch and then they approve of the sketch and then you proceed to make the actual garments then you can speak to your tailors how are they going to receive their payments is it commission or is it salary and then speak to them as well this is the design we're making discuss with them this is the design how are you going to go about it because see it's not enough to just give the tailor the design and say sew it this is the design take so and then you give them the measurement it's not enough discuss with them how this sleeve what do you think about this sleeve is it flare or is it pleats even if you're not making it like an interrogation but just like a discussion is it pleats is it flare so they can speak you can they can tell you and you're like oh no no, no i don't think this is pleats or i think it's flare or i think it's gathers so that it reduces error because the truth is that even if you have tailors that are doing the sewing if there's any wahala or any issues it will fall on your head because you're the designer you are the one that the customer knows they don't know your tailors <laughs> they're not even supposed to know your tailors so if there's any error or any wahala it will fall on your head so you have to be involved in the process okay so setting up a fashion business takes a lot of your time takes a lot of your money takes a lot of your efforts but like I always say, okay, like I always say, it is important that you understand that a good business runs itself. That might sound weird, but let me explain. A good business runs itself in the sense that if you charge your customers well, I've, I've explained to you an aspect of um, charging customers. If you charge your customer well and you're getting the money in, like money is coming in, you're getting a lot of orders. And you're using that money, you're taking a percentage of that money and putting back into the business. It's not every money you get from your business you use for your personal care. As a soft, soft lady, you want to use all the money from your business. You want to use that and buy bone straight and buy. There's nothing wrong with buying bone straight, but don't use all of your money on your personal self, on yourself, or on your family and all that. When you get money from your business, take a fraction and put back into the business. So that the business does not crumble okay put some money back into the business i like the 30 30 30 rule okay so when you get money from your business you can put 30 percent of that money back into the business in some cases you can put 60 percent depending on the needs of your business at that time do you understand so that's um just that's just basically it. that's what i can say for now i still have a lot to say about all these things we've talked about but I think this video is getting too long <laughs> this live stream is getting too long so i think we should just end it here so if you have any questions let me know now so i can actually read your comments now and respond if you have any questions just let me know uh, cutting phobia yes i've talked about cutting phobia if you missed that then you might have to re-watch the live stream i'm going to save this stream on my channel so if you go on my channel just click on the live tab you're going to see this video so you can watch it again okay so of course i've talked about cutting phobia so yeah any other questions before we leave the best industrial machine i can buy that have different stitches okay so most industrial machines most industrial machines do not have multiple different stitches most industrial machines i use email I don't have an email industrial sewing machine right now, but I used to use email industrial sewing machine. It was my mom's own when I was in Portacote. It didn't have multiple stitches. It had just a straight stitch. So most times with industrial sewing machines, um, the benefit is the speed. So it's mostly the speed that you look out for in industrial sewing machines. But if you want a sewing machine that can, you can sew multiple stitches, you can get um, an electric sewing machine. Those are the ones that usually have multiple stitches. They are good brother um, sewing machines. Yes, I've talked about how to charge customers. Femi, I have talked about how to charge customers. I have talked about it extensively. So please, you can go back and rewatch this live stream on my channel. 
I'll save the video. So yeah, um, you can get an electric sewing machine. Electric sewing machines usually have multiple stitches, okay? And with electric sewing machines, it uses light, obviously, that's the disadvantage because if there's no light, you can't use it. But you can get Singer. I use a Singer um, electric sewing machine and it has multiple stitches. I even have a video on my channel where I reviewed my own Singer sewing machine that I use. So yeah, there's Brother. You can get Brother um, electric sewing machines. They also have good um, stitches as well. I use a Singer 4423 heavy duty heavy duty sewing machine that's the name of the electric sewing machine i use and it has multiple stitches okay so yeah any more questions before i leave any more questions it's, it's been so 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 amazing to talk to you guys like the last time i did a live stream was two years ago and i don't think i had up to ten thousand subscribers then please talk about about new navy in sewing what Online upgrade class. I have online classes so available. Uh, just send me a message on Instagram at the underscore ceiling. I'm going to tell you the online classes that are available for this month. And then if you're interested, you can enroll. I didn't quite get your question. So I should talk about newbie. Is it newbie? Newbie in sewing. I didn't quite get your question. Please uh, rephrase, paraphrase that we rephrase your question and ask again so is there any more question before we leave any more question any more question any more question guys there's super thanks there's super chats i've been talking for an hour plus help your girl we want to we want to move from our house to a a, a, a rented space we need money <laughs> so there's super thanks yes at the slim exactly jane that's the exact handle uh, Ajiva, please, what can we see? Electric, okay, sorry. So, um, Ajiva, the difference between an electric sewing machine and an industrial sewing machine is that an electric sewing machine is portable. So, it, those are the ones that you carry. You can literally carry an electric sewing machine around. But an industrial sewing machine has a table, has a giant motor. It's not, you can also carry an industrial sewing machine, but it's not as portable as an electric sewing machine. An electric sewing machine is smaller. It doesn't have a table. It just, you, can, you have to put it on top of a table to use it. So it's like a tabletop sewing machine, right? But an industrial sewing machine comes with its own table, okay? An industrial sewing machine has a foot pedal. You no, know, that is, you attach to the table of the machine. But an electric sewing machine, you have to attach the foot pedal. The foot pedal literally comes with the electric sewing machine, but you have to attach it and then drop the pedal on the floor. So it's just a more, it's like a more portable machine, okay? Yes, domestic sewing machine, I'm sorry. <laughs> domestic sewing machine, electric sewing machine. I call it electric, by the way. Can I talk about sewing needle? Uh, maybe I can do a video on that. Sewing needles, different sewing needles for industrial machine, uh, manual machines and domestic sewing machines yes so when i say domestic sewing machine i'm actually referring to electric sewing machine so yes i was, I was saying guys there is super thanks there's super chat you can give me money you can donate to the business you can support the ministry and so as low as 400 naira, 300 naira, you can dash me so that i can continue being a baby girl do you understand <laughs> so yes i just thought that you mentioned that that there's super thanks there's super chat so yeah, any more questions before we go? Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I've had so much fun talking to you guys. Do you think we should do this often? Should we do this like once a month or we can do this often? I really don't mind. I really enjoy talking to you guys. And um, I feel like it's important, like I said earlier. Okay, you're welcome, Ajiba. So the super chats, the super chat is simply, you know, your chats have been popping up now, right? But your chats have been the normal color, right? Normal black or white, depending on my theme, on my theme. But when it comes to super chats, you pay small money, shikini, shikini money, 
you pay shikini money and then your chat glows in the live stream do you understand so when your chat pops up because you paid money your chat glows so everybody can see that ah, this person is um bilonia <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah jikash <laughs> So yes, everybody can see that you have some you know, money and you love me so much that you decided to give me. That's just super chat. It's just a way to support me. Do you understand? Just a way to support me and just show that you appreciate what I'm doing here, okay? So like I said, I would like us to do this um, frequently so that we can address other things apart from drafting, cutting, sewing, drafting, cutting, sewing. That's all this channel has been about for the past two years. So we can address other things. We can talk about business in when it comes to fashion we can talk about challenges and sewing we can even talk about dealing with difficult customers because guys that one is a whole topic it's a whole topic altogether dealing with difficult customers because i've had my own share of difficult customers and i know you guys have had that experience too so we can talk about anything really you guys want so in my videos if you have any video okay first saturday okay so Glory is suggesting that we do our live streams every first Saturday of the month. I like that idea. Thank you very much, Onye. <laughs> so um, Glory is suggesting that we do our live chats, our live streams every first Saturday of the month. If you guys agree, let me know. I would be very happy to do that. Every month, every month, every first, first Saturday of the month, we do a live stream just like this. And then if you have any questions or you have any suggestions on what we should talk about during the next live stream, you can comment on any of my videos. So just open any of my video and leave a comment saying, um, let's talk about this, that, that, that in the next live stream. So yeah, I think you can actually do that. It's going to be fun. But yeah, you guys should be coming online like this. So you guys, your presence here, amazing. Thank you so much for, you know, commenting, you know, all your amazing comments, your suggestions, your questions. Thank you for being, thank you for participating in the live stream, basically, okay? And I have been doing this and you guys might just be mute and then I'll get discouraged and stop. Do you get? Ah, some customers are something else. Oh, thank you, Beauty. Thank you so much. Beauty just gave me a live chat. Okay? I think that's a live chat or a live thanks. Um, super chat, sorry. Beauty gave me super chat. Thank you so much, Beauty. I really appreciate you. Um, so, yes. Um, and she gave yes beauty gave you super chat so thank you very much but anyway thank you guys for watching let me go now i need to go and cook soup <laughs> so let me go and cook soup so i can eat i'm even hungry so yeah thank you guys so much for being on this live stream with me and i'll see you in the next live stream and that will be next month first saturday of next month but before then expect a new video this saturday that's coming so next is it next saturday this coming Saturday, expect a new video. So thank you for watching. I love you guys so much. Um, the, the super chat, I don't even know how it's done, but below the video, you should see, I don't know how it's done, guys. I really don't know how it's done. I wish I knew, but I think you would see the option under the video. Uh, Beauty, can you please tell us how you gave the super chat? Just comment. The, pro the process that you used to give the super chats. So did you did you see the option? Uh, Beauty, please respond though. How did you do the, give the super chat so that others can also give? <laughs> Beauty, we're waiting for you. Has she gone offline? But anyway, just just check, okay. It should be under the video, I guess. It should be under the video. There should be an option somewhere where you can give the super chat. Okay, Beauty has responded. She said, uh, by your, okay, you see a dollar sign by the right corner where you type your message. Okay, thank you very much, Beauty. So just click on the dollar sign beside the message box. So where you have the box where you type your message, you see a dollar sign. So just click on the dollar sign, then you can dash me money. I really appreciate you guys, though, honestly, from the depth of my heart. 36,000, 37,000 subscribers. I'm really, really grateful, guys. Thank you so much for all your comments every time. I'm really, really... <laughs> yes. What should we be expecting on Saturday? Hmm. Do I even know? 
okay click on the dollar so bt says click on the dollar sign and you'll be able to select the amount you want to give okay so please do that thank you very much so yeah next week saturday what are we expecting ah my dear i'm not sure i've not even created a video for next week saturday let me just be honest with you guys at this time i don't have a video for next week saturday but during the week i'll film something and i'll upload it by saturday okay so thank you guys so much i'm going to leave now i'm going to run thank you so much i love you guys very very much like very much i really really appreciate you all uh yeah okay guys have a good day enjoy your saturday and bye